If you've followed this channel long at all, you probably know that I'm doing a Polaroid 365 project. And as I've mentioned many times, it's getting very expensive. And often when I go on a trip, I normally pack some Nikon film cameras and a bunch of 35 millimeter film to go with me. But now I'm spending all my money on Polaroid film. So I can't really do that at the moment. I need to kind of be saving money. So I'm finding ways to cut costs. And so for this trip, the way I save money was by packing my Fujifilm XE4 instead of my Nikon FE or N65 or N90 or whatever. Now, overall, I think this is my favorite mirrorless camera since I got it three or so years ago. I bought it on launch day. I bought it, uh, I pre-ordered it. I wanted the Fuji X100V, but I knew that the XE4 could change lenses, so that was a big plus for me. And so I pre-ordered it and I paid 850 for the body. I've had the temptation to sell it here and there just because they are worth so much more money now. And that's partially because it's discontinued, but Fujifilm cameras are just kind of overvalued right now. But no matter how much money this camera is worth, I struggle to be able to part with it. I can't do it. I just love it so much. So when I'm looking to save some money on film, it's a killer alternative, especially for travel because it is so compact and small. So where did I take it? Last week, I went to Las Vegas for the West Coast Art and Frame Expo. As you know, I sell prints for a living and I've got some stuff cooking with my friends at Art Warehouse in Chattanooga. We thought it would be a good opportunity to meet some people and make some connections. But this video is about my Fujifilm X-E4, so I will get into print stuff in a future video. Now, I use this camera in kind of an insane way that no one should really ever use it, which is that I keep it on multiple exposure mode 24 seven. And maybe other people do that too, but the annoying part about that for most people is that in order to do that, you have to, every time you take a single exposure that you don't want to make a double exposure with, you have to hit back before you can take the next shot so that the camera knows you're not gonna keep stacking exposures on top of each other. And I kind of give up to get on that. I don't have uh, focus peaking when I use that feature. Um, and it is generally kind of annoying. So anytime any of my friends have picked up this camera to use, they're always confused by how I have it set up. So when we landed in Vegas, we kind of got the lay of the land. I've been to Vegas many times, uh, but oftentimes for work. So I haven't really had a ton of chances to explore much other than the strip. And like my other trips, I didn't get much of a chance to explore this time either. So I just kind of did what I could with what I had. But fortunately, due to the jet lag and time change situation I was undergoing, I would be able to get up early enough to do some wandering on my own. So I brought two lenses, and the first is my 16 millimeter Fuji lens uh, f 2.8. It's it's just a great autofocus lens. I like wide angle lenses. I like getting close up to stuff with wide angle lenses. So that's always a go to with this camera. It's also great for video. Uh, and the other lens I brought is my manual focus TT Artisans point f 0.95 manual focus lens. And this lens is compact. Feels like a film camera lens. And I really like the look of it. And it was very affordable. It's a super affordable lens. It's kind of my more slow chill photography lens and speaking of slow and chill i was pretty jet lagged so i would get up at like 4 a.m and just kind of wander the vegas strip and now other than trying to shoot with a manual focus lens while holding a coffee i would say wandering the strip early in the morning was a pretty chill experience
Now, one thing I forget about when going back to digital is the amazing feeling of instant gratification. Pretty awesome to be able to see your photos immediately after taking them. And that's something you take for granted when you shoot a lot of digital, but when you shoot a lot of film, you grow to appreciate that feeling and it's kind of addicting. Even with my Polaroid camera, I have to wait like 15 to 30 minutes to see the final shot. So having just the instantaneousness of digital is pretty nice. Now this brings up a commonly asked question, is a Fujifilm camera really a good alternative to a film camera? And people say that a lot, Part, maybe because it, the word film is in Fujifilm, maybe because these cameras look pretty range findery, but does it really fill that film shaped hole in our hearts? Yes and no. I think it just depends on what cameras you like to shoot. My preference is small cameras that get out of my way. So really at the end of the day, when it comes to whether I'm shooting digital or film, I kind of don't really want it to matter at a certain point. I'm still probably going to be focused on the same subject matter and I'm still gonna be shooting in a similar way that I always shoot in, no matter if I'm using film or digital. I've moved on from the days where I'm carrying a giant DSLR and a giant lens regularly just around town, which is kind of insane to think that I did that anyways, but I did that for most of my photography career. Uh, and I much prefer a smaller, sleeker camera, which is why I carry around a Nikon FE when I shoot film and I carry my Fuji Film XE4 when I shoot digital. All I need from them is to be small and do double exposures and then I kind of forget get about what camera I'm using. I just take photos. I just focus on the important part of photography. And to me, that's all that matters because I'm gonna end up just using them the same way, regardless of whether they are film or digital. And right now, like I said, Polaroid film is bankrupting me, so I'm using digital. But I don't know if my photos would be all that different if I were shooting film. There may be a little more precision in the digital just because I'm able to compose via a screen and see exactly what I'm gonna get. But overall, I'm shooting the same stuff. Now, the biggest day I had with the Fujifilm X-C4 was when we went to the Venetian, which uh, we had a hookup over the Venetian and got a tour of like the Venetian theater and stuff. It was very cool. And this is the hotel with all the gondolas. So I spent way too much time trying to get cool photos of like their hats and stripes and different cool, interesting features of that area. Also, I got this wild double exposure that I did not think would work at all. It's an entrance to a nightclub. The first shot is just the entrance, and in the second shot, I spun the camera to create this cool vortex. But that's not all. If you zoom in, you see the Welcome to Vegas sign. I had no idea it was there when I shot it. Crazy. Vegas is a weird place. Next time I go, I want to check out old Vegas and like downtown and places where people actually live. You know, the, the Disneyland for degenerates thing is cool and it's interesting because it's a place that a lot of people go, but there's it's very artificial and it doesn't quite hit what I wanted to hit as far as photos there because everything's just too fake. I don't know. One day I will go to Vegas for not work stuff or I will go there for a long enough time to where I will, to, I will have time to explore all that stuff. But until then, this is what you get for now. And I know how this sounds, but I think whatever camera you use doesn't matter. It matters in so far as like you enjoy using it and and are comfortable with it. But at some point for you to get great images, you kind of have to forget about the camera. It kind of has to disappear for you at some point. So yeah, taking my Fujifilm X-C4 to Vegas uh, instead of a 35 millimeter film camera did save me money. And I didn't have to wait for photos, which was nice. But other than that, I would probably be shooting the same photos regardless. And maybe the focal length isn't quite the same. Maybe the screen does affect my images in a way that not having a screen would as well. I don't know. Um, but I kind of gravitate toward what I gravitate because I'm still me. So the photos are still ultimately going to be very Will Malone-esque photos, regardless of film or digital. So use what you like to use and whether it's film or digital, I don't think really matters ultimately. I think it's, it's all about the images. That's why we're doing this, right? Is to take photos, not stare at cameras on our shelves. Thank you for watching. You can follow me on Instagram at Will Malone. Uh, my Polaroid Instagram account is at RoydRage72. And next week, we'll talk about the Polaroid stuff I shot in Vegas, and we'll do a little Polaroid 365 update. So don't worry. The Vegas fun is not over yet. See you next week.